No long intro. Now, in today's video, I'll be performing a quarterly analysis for the Japanese yen. And to do so, one of the very first things we're going to look at is the seasonal tendency for these markets. And afterwards, we'll take a look at open interest, which gives us a lot of insight into what these markets are likely to do in the future. And after all of that, we'll be performing a top-down analysis, so going from the monthly to the weekly charts and all the way down to the daily chart. And from the daily chart, we'll actually break it down even lower and we'll perform a relative strength analysis. So we'll be comparing and, and contrasting these markets to others, so it's other crosses. So with no hesitation let's actually take a look at the seasonal tendency and for the japanese yen itself we have a tendency to make a mid january high and early march low now these aren't long-term highs they're very short term as you will see in the following chart zoom this out So now here's the 40 year seasonal. So we have in January here. So mid January, we're expecting this right now. It's currently the eighth of this month. And once we actually take a look at the charts themselves and you guys will actually realize this has some really good potential and we actually can see the downside in here in March. So we'll be building the, this framework together in the next few minutes. So here's the chart. You can take a screenshot if you want or pause the video if you find any of, of these other swing points relevant to you. But to move forward, now take a look at open interest. Now, open interest is actually one of the good ones one of my favorite tools when it comes to doing um my own personal analysis so what open interest is essentially is the total number of uh, outstanding contracts that are held by market participants at the end of each trading day so where volume essentially measures the pressure or even intensity behind a, a price trend or price move Open interest is a bit different. Open interest measures the flow of money into the futures markets. So essentially, for each seller of a futures contract, there must be a buyer on the other side. So that makes um, open interest, it's like it's combined. Each uh, number on open interest is actually a buyer and a seller. So because of that, it really tells us if people are even interested in a certain market. And one of the uh, things ICT mentioned, I I'll actually link um, the video in the description box. He says, if prices are in an uptrend and open interest is rising, this is a bullish sign. There are shorts who are being stopped out, but new sellers are taking their place. As the market continues to rise, the longs get stronger and the shorts get weaker. Now, Michael mentioned this, and it's one of those things, once you actually take a look at the chart, and you take a look at open interest, it becomes very clear why that is. And once we actually take a look at the chart, I'll actually show you guys. But let's actually take a quick look at, on bar chart right here. So this is open interest in early December. I mean, this thing took off. Open interest started to rise as we're in an uptrend, which is, just, is, is a really good confirmation tool to actually tell us this isn't any sort of fake move. This isn't artificial. There are actually willing participants and people who are taking the other side of um, these shorts. And right now, markets 
took out this swing low down here. We have a SIB in here. And once we get to the actual um, trading view, I'll actually show you guys some of the really good stuff. But this is very important to see open interest rising in here. And it's not declining. This is just ranging. So within the next few weeks, I'll actually be anticipating open interest to be trending again and going higher. But this move right here was essentially them showing their hand because they they really can't hide this and especially not a candle like that as you can see after open interest does something like that eventually the markets actually price this in I mean massive candle so let's return to our mind no. all right And for our top down analysis, we'll do a monthly, weekly, and a daily. So with no further ado, let's actually take a look at that right now. We'll start from the monthly. We'll break this down. you can see we have a Sibian here this is essentially our drawn liquidity so this is where these markets are likely to be headed within the next few weeks and that's why it's in line with our actual seasonal tendency if we're expecting a high to be formed mid January it may happen later so it could possibly be late January even early February but we know for a fact, the markets will be aiming to rebalance this price range right here. It only offered sell side. Very likely markets retraces into this. And one thing that is worth pointing out is having this swing low down here. So in a lot of um, teachings, that, that would be support. So support broken turn, turn to resistance. So there will be a lot of retail traders jumping on this and actually being willing to sell short down here. And because of that, I'm anticipating the markets to actually trade higher. So higher than this Sibian here. So we're looking at possibly consequent encouragement of this um, down close candle right here. And that's also something my, uh, Michael referred to a few times is, um, Whenever you see a swing low and there's a fair value gap that's right on top of it, if there's another one that's higher, anticipate the other one to be traded to instead of the first one. Because in all likelihood, retail will actually see this and try to trade it. I get the idea. It's the right idea, but um, it's just it's hard to be. Um, to be right if you're taking it straight out of the book because market makers know this they know a lot of people will be shorting down here so because of that i'm specifically anticipating them to take the markets higher possibly consequent encouragement of this down close candle and the low of this candle right here so anticipating this to be a mitigation block i'm not bullish on the yen in the long term not even close so i am anticipating lower prices for the rest of the year but to do that we really want to see the markets take out buy side and i think it will especially in this move and as you guys can see we have a bullish order block in here and for some of you you may want to you may want this to be traded a bit lower deeper into it I don't think that's going to happen and let me show you why we'll drop down to a weekly chart so here's the candle that started our order block 
And in here we had a SIBI markets traded into it. So institutional order flow entry drill. So the markets already worked that level. So in all likelihood, it's not likely to return all the way back in here, especially not on a weekly basis. And if you actually take a closer look, fair value gap in here. This past week, markets trade that in and return back up here. Had uh, had this candle closed inside this range and closed it in completely, then having a deeper um, retracement into the order block would be um, even viable. But seeing how it rejects um, this fair value gap, I don't think it's going to do that. And it's already worked that level enough. And one of the reasons um, I'm saying this is because we have this volume imbalance in here. Really good draw on liquidity. And if you guys pay closer look, let's see. And here's our SIBI. Here's our SIBI in here. Here's the old low. But this is where I'm actually anticipating the markets uh, likely go to. This is the second imbalance I was talking about. It wasn't visible on the monthly chart, but on the weekly chart, it's pretty clear. So that's the one I'm actually aiming for. And that consequent encouragement of that gap is that old low that I'm anticipating to become the mitigation block later down the road. And if you look at this whole price range, let's drop this in the middle. It looks like your classic market maker buy model. So this is the sell side of the curve. This is the swing low here. That's the, essentially the turtle soup. Low risk buy. And you can be buying anywhere in here up until that volume imbalance and ultimately our drawn liquidity, the SIBI in here. Let's drop to the daily. Another volume imbalance in here. I don't think you guys can see it. Let me remove this. So a volume imbalance in here. Here's a high. I'd love to see that taken. And that's our second um, imbalance up here. So this past week, sell side taken. And it's really good to actually see that because had the markets not take out this swing low and traded higher, let's say it actually took out buy stop or buy side liquidity up here, it would have put me in a situation where I would be anticipating a three drives pattern. Usually the way I look at a three, three drives pattern is when um the markets form three consecutive swing highs without ever offering sell side or even taking out any short term or medium term um, sell side liquidity. Whenever you actually see that, it's a good sign the markets are getting ready to drop. It's in a sense layering liquidity. So when the markets keep offering buy side, buy side, buy side, buy side, traders are getting in going long, leaving their stop loss below here because they're trading with the trend. But then, boom, the markets just drop to take out all that um, sell side liquidity. So it's really good to see the markets actually did take sell side first. And now we have this SIBI in here, which is a really, really good drawn liquidity for this week. So essentially, here's your bias. So we're anticipating the markets trade into here, maybe get a reaction off of it. But ultimately, we want to see a tr trade through this rejection block and higher into that volume imbalance we mentioned earlier. So into this. 
and ultimately even higher. We won't drop to a four hour or anything lower than that, but that's the yen. And now when it comes to performing a relative strength analysis, let's actually go back to our mind map here. So here are a few crosses that are with the yen. And the only one we we'll actually take a look at is the US dollar. So we're actually bearish on the dollar. And I remember maybe a week and a half ago, I posted a, a link to a trading view chart and a picture also of the US dollar weekly chart. And we had an old busy that I had my eye on. And that's essentially my drawn liquidity for the dollar for the next coming weeks until price trades there. So if on the dollar we're expecting lower prices and the yen we're expecting higher prices. Now this makes the dollar yen the best pair that you could possibly even consider trading because of that. Because we have a weak pair paired with a strong one. Now we know who's going to win this battle. So because of that, we'll actually take a look at the US um, yen. We won't look at Euro yen because if you look at the Euro chart, Euro is actually pretty bullish too. The pound, same thing. The Aussie, same thing. So this one's the only one we can possibly even look at and aim to have a, a good trade and we're probably going to have big moves in that market and everything else, the Euro Yen, the Pound Yen, the Aussie Yen, they're all most likely just consolidate and you don't really want that. So let's actually take a look at that chart right now. We'll look at the dollar first. Nah, here's that busy I was referring to earlier. Uh, earlier last week, markets were all the way up here, and I, and I remember just thinking to myself, "Yeah, right." <laughs> Yeah, I think on Tuesday, I mean, these th this market took off. The weekly candle was up here. And I, I, th I remember thinking to myself, the likelihood of the market's closing day around there is very unlikely. So I really um, gave me a really good bias for the remainder of the week. And that's why I was able to take some of those good trades you guys um, saw last week. That was because of that move. And now... Going into next week, this is the BISI right here. That really, really good drawn liquidity. And we have some lows down here that it's likely to take while trading into this. Now, let's drop on a daily chart for this market. Relative equal lows down here. Really want to see this taken. And ultimately trade into this busy. Do a four hour, see if there's anything good. So we have a SIBI down here. So ideally, I'd like to see the markets retrace. Maybe stop inside this old, old gap and then trade lower. I don't want to see it fill it completely. Just retrace enough. And if it actually trades into this gap, then I'll be awesome. So in here and then head lower. Let's take a look.
Now, this is the US dollar with the Japanese yen. So we have a weak dollar and a strong yen. And because of that, you can see how the, these markets have been heading lower for the past few weeks. So they look very symmetrical and that's a, a good thing. So in these markets, you'll be looking to go short pretty much. Grab your attention. This old busy in here. So that's our draw on liquidity. So we want to see the markets trade lower. And we're looking at a daily chart right now too. So for the next few weeks or a few days, depending on how volatile these markets are, that's where we essentially want to see the, the, these markets going. Let's go back to weekly. I'm trying to recall what these levels are, but the way they look, I think I might have put them on the monthly chart. Okay, yeah, I figured. So here's a imbalance in here. So here's a busy on the monthly chart. That's ultimately our drawn liquidity. So we're looking for lower prices. That's that old high. So we could potentially see the markets trade lower than this busy, which is ideal in my opinion. So that's why this is a quarterly analysis because I think for the next month to two months, that's what I'll be looking on. Um, that's what I'll be looking at. I also wanted to show you guys something. If you guys recall earlier, I talked about the three drives pattern. Let's actually take a look at that. See, markets took out buy side in here. So that's one, that's one high. That's another one. And look at this. It didn't take out sell side liquidity, but it made another high and another one without ever taking sell side liquidity. So it's layering sell side liquidity. It's letting people put their stop loss and think, okay, it's safe because of course this is a trending market, right? <laughs> Trade with the trend, they say. Yeah, I tried that. Let's, let's put this. So all this really nice trend line in here. And of course, if you have some kind of moving average, they're doing all kinds of divergence or crossings or crossovers, I think they call it. So everyone's buying in this. Everyone's buying. And that's what um, I see has something called phantom trend line, I think, or uh, trend line phantom. So whenever I actually see a trend line, especially on the lower time frames, I already know the markets are likely to take that. So don't don't trust that sort of stuff, especially when you see a three drives pattern. And whenever there's um high impact or medium impact news events coming out, specifically high impact news events, and you see this pattern <laughs> ahead of the news event, yeah, it's it's a done deal. A lot of guys are are just buying this. Yeah, it's a trending market. Yeah, right. And that's exactly what happened on Friday. Hi, another one, another one. Surely this thing can go lower, and boom, takes off. 
It's actually one of my favorite patterns, actually. I don't actually trade the pattern, but I really like seeing it. Something about the aesthetic, I suppose. So here was a shift in market structure in here. Fair value gap, retrace back into it, and then headed lower. And for the remainder of um, Friday, we just ranged. So not much went on, but overall, this is the market to be trading, looking for shorts, and I'll be actually trying to trade it. And I'll try to record my trades in these markets and I'll upload it on the YouTube channel. So hopefully you guys found this insightful. So had the seasonal tendency, open interest, and then we did the top down analysis. So we looked at the monthly, the weekly, the daily, and then we performed the relative strength analysis. I didn't want to go too long on the video, so that's why I didn't want to take a look at the euro, the pound, and all these things. But I think later down the line, maybe this week, I'll be doing so. So it, it all depends on how you guys like this one. If you guys want to see other quarterly analysis videos, then I'll do them. But if not, then <laughs> I'll just stick to making other sort of videos. And this one was the first time I was doing one and recording myself while doing it. So if there's any other things you guys want to see or anything you guys want me to actually add, I'll do so. I remember thinking I should have um, should have added the KOT report, but then it would have just been too much, really. Um, you don't really need to have seven different things when you're doing your analysis. If you have two or three good things that you really understand very well and you can perform very well, you can just work with that. Open interest, seasonal tendency, and just price action. And for me, price action alone is already good enough. So nothing else really matters if you actually understand how to look at price, especially when you look at the yen futures and seeing the SIBI up there. I mean, it's, it is very likely it's going to trade higher to balance that, rebalance that price range. So because of that, I always want to look for confirmation. You always want to look at seasonal tendencies which also gives you more confidence in your analysis. But overall, price action alone told me everything I needed to know, and that's why I made the video. So, all that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and, and I hope this video was insightful to you guys. So hopefully you guys learn a thing or two, and be careful for the next coming weeks, and good trading.